What's up guys? Welcome back to another episode of Miss Flips. In today's episode, we are participating in the Ugly Duckling Challenge. This one is hosted by none other than Corey over at Desert DIY. So if you haven't checked her out yet, please make sure to go check her out. I also have the link for the playlist in the description below. So make sure to check out everyone else's video after you check this one out. But anyways, let's get flippin'. Bow. Another amazing element about this challenge is that we have to donate either the piece or the earnings from our piece to charity. And since this is a commission, I'll be giving my earnings to local families here in my town. This piece was in pretty decent shape. However, it was covered in this really cheap gray color, but I could see the potential with the wood grain underneath and you could tell that it was amazing quality. It also had the longest drawers that I have ever seen in my entire life. Look at these things. Massive. Anyways, let's get started. The first thing I'm gonna do is cover the top of this piece with some smart strip just to get all of this paint off and down to bare wood. Now that we got the entire surface covered, it is time to cover it in plastic. So I'm using recycled plastic bags and I let it sit overnight and this is the end result the next day. Of course, the first thing that I uncovered when taking off the paint was a burn mark left over from the prior refurbisher. They had obviously been sanding too aggressively and probably realized a little too late that they had just sanded right through the veneer. So we are gonna figure out what to do about that later in the video. But for now, enjoy some satisfying stripping. So now that I was able to get the majority of the stripper off, it was time to get rid of this finish that was on the unpainted part of the top. And for this, I just used a scraper and made sure to be very careful and avoid all the dents and dings that can happen while you're scraping. Now that we had the finish removed and all of the paint stripper taken off, it was time to clean the top of the piece. And this I just did with some water and a coconut bristle sponge actually, which if you wanna check out, make sure to check it out in the description below. I have all the links to all my products that I use down there. So make sure to check it out. This sponge is super eco-friendly and worked amazingly well at getting all of the residue left behind by the stripper. I wanna remind everyone that that Smart Strip is an eco-friendly stripper, so with this, all I have to use is water and a rag and this sponge. However, with other chemical strippers, you do have to use other chemicals to remove them. So don't just buy any stripper and think you can remove it with water. It's very specific to Smart Strip, which again is why I think it's so incredibly amazing. Not only is it eco-friendly, but the process to clean it up is as well. Look at that. It works so well. It's beautiful. Invest in Smart Strip now. It's worth it. 
Anywho, it's time to prep this piece for sanding and painting. So we're removing all of the hardware and then I made sure to give it a deep clean with a water and vinegar solution with a damp cloth and scrub. And once everything was all clean, I went ahead and plugged up those old holes for the old hardware so that we can put new hardware in. For me personally, when I want there to be raw wood, it is much easier to strip something or scrape it rather than to sand it off because sanding takes a lot of time and it eats up your sandpaper like crazy. So instead of wasting all of that sandpaper, I just went in with a scraper and got all of the paint off or at least the majority of the paint off and then got to sanding after that. And now my friends, it is finally time to sand. I started off by sanding with a 180 grit and then moved up to a 220 and then moved up from there to a 280 and then finished off with a 320 grit. I don't know what kind of life this desk had before it came to me, but it was very well loved. It had lots of dings and it got a lot of use clearly from all the damage that it had to its surface. However, starting off with a 180 grit helped me get a lot of that out and then all of the following grids helped me get all of the little squigglies left behind and all of the raised edges left from the lower grit. And then finishing off with that 320 just really made everything nice and smooth and finished feeling. For the rest of the piece, I just used a 180 sandpaper and went over all of the painted areas just to make sure that my paint had something to adhere to while I was spraying. Once I had all of my surfaces sanded, I went in with my vacuum to get all of the dust off. Well, at least, you know, all of the loose dust. <laughs> and then I went in with a cloth and some water and wiped off the entire piece just to make sure that I got all of the rest of that off because yeah, look at that. That's why we do it, folks. That's why we make sure it's clean. Now that everything was clean and ready to go, it was time to tape off all of that wood that we stripped down so that it wouldn't get painted when I went in to spray.
So here is the mood board that my client gave me for what they're going for in this office space. So I decided to go with the color Mr. Bean from Good Bones Paint, and I decided to go ahead and spray it because spraying would just be so much easier than painting this piece any other way. Even with a roller, it would take forever to do because it is just so big. So if you guys haven't checked out a paint sprayer or used one or tried one, invest. They're great. This isn't even an ad. I'm just telling you because they're wonderful and save you so much time. Speaking of saving so much time, Good Bones Paint is amazing. Now this is an ad, however, they are an amazing paint company and brand and I really truly do love them. Their dry time is amazing and as I said, it helps you save a lot of time because it dries so darn quickly. If you guys wanted to give it a try, make sure to check out the link in the description below. And if you wanna get 15% off of your order, make sure to use the code STAYFLIPPIN with a little smiley face because you know your girls gotta stay happy. Anyways, yeah, give it a try. For this piece, I made sure to apply a total of three coats of paint onto this baby, and one can of this paint was enough to get this entire piece plus the drawers. And after everything was dry, it was time to unveil the bare wood. It's beautiful. Ooh, ah. Uh, but I forgot a piece of tape. Will I get it? Will she get it? Ah, she does. For the wood, I am lightening it up with this water-based stain, and honestly, it kind of works similar to a whitewash. I didn't really care for it too much, it didn't seep into the wood as much as I would like. However, it did help to lighten up the wood a little bit, so I went ahead and wiped all of the excess off, and this was the end result. And this burn mark was still, unfortunately, pretty visible, so my client and I decided to go ahead and paint a trim around the edge of the surface here, so that we would hide that burn mark and still make it look sophisticated while leaving the majority of the wood bare. Because I'm running on a little bit of a time crunch, I went ahead and used my heat gun to lightly blow over the paint just to make it dry a little quicker. And I made sure to keep my distance with this and to move it around frequently. That way it didn't make any of the paint bubble up. So now that it was time to finally apply the top coat, I went in and strained it before I applied it because, well, this. This is why you strain your paint. That could end up in your finish or clog your sprayer and ruin your sprayer forever. So just take the extra step and strain your paint. It's a good habit. Anyways, we're going in with a matte finish and we're putting it all over to make it look so buttery and smooth and beautiful. A little drop spilled on the top there. That's what you just saw me do. You just saw me uh, wipe off the, the drip so that it wouldn't end up being weird in the finish. But anyways, yeah, we're applying top coat. 
I did three coats of the top coat and sanded in between each coat with a thousand grit sandpaper. That way it would come out really nice and smooth. And after that, it was time to put in the new hardware and it was good to go. But anyways, as we are coming to an end guys, I just wanna remind you to check out the other artists participating in this amazing challenge hosted by Desert DIY. So make sure to check out the playlist below and watch all of those videos. And don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and do all those things so that we can stay a happy flippin' family. And thank you so much to all of the support from my current members and non-members. You guys are awesome and I love you all. I hope you have a wonderful holiday, Merry Christmas, and Happy New Year, everyone. And until next time, stay flippin'. Thank you.